dear students i am dr k kannan professor mechanical engineering anjaliya mal mahalingam engineering college koyilvenni i am going to discuss the topic psychrometric properties uh, through this video lecture uh, the psychrometric properties are the basics for air conditioning uh, air conditioning is a common terminology today everybody know the air conditioning air conditioned room where uh, you find the cold air the temperature of uh, air inside the air conditioned space uh, less than the atmosphere temperature normally uh, in our places and uh, we studied the refrigeration earlier and the basic difference between refrigeration and air conditioning that you have to understand refrigeration we control only the temperature so if you take your refrigerator uh, inside the refrigerator we maintain lower temperature so controlling and maintaining low temperature it is refrigeration and in a air conditioned space in addition to the temperature we have to control another parameter uh, called water vapor normally the water vapor is measured in terms of relative humidity the amount of water vapor present in the air is measured in terms of relative humidity so in the air conditioned space we have to control uh, the temperature and the relative humidity or temperature and the amount of water vapor Uh, the air conditioning initially it was uh, invented or used uh, for human comfort air condition technology initially uh, it, it was used for the human comfort and later on it is extended to the industrial processes and nowadays you, you may find many of the many industrial processes they require a controlled environmental condition uh, for effective processing effective industrial processes so we discuss the psychrometric we begin with the psychrometric uh, then we discuss the psychrometric uh, processes then we take up the air conditioning so in the air conditioner air conditioning the process what we are doing to regulate the temperature and the uh, relative humidity of the air is called as psychrometric processes that we will discuss so first we understand what is psychrometric then we understand what is what are all the psychrometric processes and then how the psychrometric processes are used in the air conditioner we will go one by one so first we take the psychrometric the study of properties of air and water vapor mixer is called psychrometric uh, even the atmospheric air it contains certain percentage of water vapor so how to recognize uh, that the atmospheric air contains water vapor uh, is from the sweating uh, human body we, we feel sweating during the hot days the sweating is due to the amount of water vapor present in the atmospheric air if there is more amount of water vapor uh, you may find more amount of sweating uh, in the human body so the atmospheric air or the dry air it is a mixture of 79% nitrogen and 21% oxygen by volume that is what we know or 77% nitrogen and 23% oxygen by mass the atmospheric air contains uh, 79% nitrogen and 21% oxygen by volume or 77% nitrogen and 23% oxygen by volume when there are two constituents Uh, in the atmospheric air, 79% nitrogen, 21% oxygen. And there are two constituents in a gas. Uh, we take up the Dalton's law of partial pressure. So we are going to deal with the air with the water vapor in uh, psychrometric or air conditioner design. We are going to deal with the uh, air with some percentage of water vapor. So the air is a mixer of. We consider the air is a mixer of dry air and uh, uh, the Uh, water vapor so the total pressure of the uh, mixer is pa plus pw so the pa is called as partial pressure of water vapor and pw oh, sorry pw is called as partial pressure of water vapor 
and PA is the partial pressure of air and P is the total pressure of air and water vapor mixture. So everything in Pascal or Newtons per meter square are bar. So you need to, you have to oh, consistently we have to use the unit. Then uh, mold fraction of the air and mold fraction of the water vapor. So we have number of moles of dry air, number of moles of water vapor in the mixer. So the number of moles are water, I mean number of moles of moles fraction is number of moles of air divided by total number of moles uh, of the mixer, which is PA by P, partial pressure of air divided by partial pressure of total pressure of the mixer. Similarly, mole fraction of the water vapor XW is PW by P. So PW equal to partial pressure of the water vapor and divided by the P is the total pressure of the mixer. Uh, we define the first the cyclometric property, specific humidity or humidity ratio. Uh, we said the atmospheric air or the air in the air conditioned space, it is a mixture of water vapor and the air. So the mass of water vapor per unit mass of dry air present in a mixture of air and water vapor is defined as the specific humidity or the humidity ratio. Uh, simply you remember. W is the notation for specific humidity, capital W is mass of water vapor divided by mass of the dry air. Uh, mass of water vapor is mentioned by M, mass of the dry air is mentioned by G. So it is kg per kg of dry air. So kilogram of water vapor per kilogram of dry air, that is what the unit for specific humidity. So mass of water vapor per unit mass of dry air present in a mixture of air and water vapor is the specific humidity. How to calculate the specific humidity? We write the ideal gas equation for water vapor. So PW, uh, PV equal to MRT, that is the ideal gas equation. We write the equation for the water vapor, PW into capital V equal to M into RW into T, where PW is the partial pressure of water vapor, RW is the uh, gas constant for the water vapor, and for dry air, it is PA into B equal to G into RA into T. Uh, PA is the partial pressure of the air and RA is the uh, gas constant for the air. So W, uh, as we defined earlier, W equal to M by G. So from the previous two equations, from this equation, M equal to PWV divided by RW into T. And from this equation, uh, this uh, G equal to PAB divided by RA T. So substituting, a PW RA is because B is common term that is getting cancelled. So PW RA divided by RW PA. So this is what the equation M by G equal to PW by RW into RA by PA. So we take the pressure PW PA and this RA that is gas constant for the air. This is universal gas constant 8.3143 universal gas constant divided by molecular weight of the air which is 28.96. And similarly, RW, universal gas constant 8.3143 divided by uh, molecular weight of water vapor is 18. H2O, it is 18. So, solving the numerical uh, parameter, numerical part, and you will get W equal to 0 0.622 PW divided by PA, denominator is PA, PA, which is P minus PW. So, this is from the Dalton's law of partial pressure. So, we have P, PA plus PW equal to P. So from there we substitute in terms of PW. So specific humidity equal to 0.622 into PW divided by P minus PW. And this equation you have to remember. So uh, wherever we calculate the specific humidity, wherever you use the uh, term specific humidity, we have to calculate the specific humidity from, from the partial pressure of water vapor, knowing the total pressure of the air mixer, air water vapor mixer in the room. And this is what the uh, temperature entropy diagram of the uh, water vapor. So we take the partial pressure of the water vapor and uh, this is the uh, water is heated and here it is wet steam, it is the uh, saturated vapor, then it is heated. Normally in the atmospheric air, the water vapor is available as superheated vapor. So when you take the atmospheric temperature, the vapor at this given PW, partial pressure of water vapor, it will be available as a superheated vapor. So when the when the water is, when the air is cooled, lower uh, cooled, when the temperature decreases at one particular point, 
So, you know, this is the saturated tempera saturation temperature of the vapor. So, when you cool the air below the temperature, the water vapor will start to condense. That is what dew formation. So, the uh, temperature is called as dew, dew point temperature where the water vapor is converted into water particle. And at this uh, uh, temperature, the pressure PS is the saturation pressure. So, we, uh, we, uh, you take, you consider a container, small container where we have small amount of water vapor. Now, you add the water vapor. So, the water vapor pressure, water vapor quantity will increase. At a particular amount, the water vapor is saturated. The pressure corresponding to that condition is called as saturation pressure. And the specific humidity is called as saturated specific humidity. So, W at a saturated condition. That means further adding water vapor that will starts to condense. So, saturated condition W is equal to the same equation 0.622. Now, we have to substitute P S in instead of P W. So, P S by P minus P S. So, this is the specific humidity at saturated condition. And the next terminology is relative humidity. Uh, it is defined like this. Mass of the water vapor in a given volume of air at the temperature T divided by mass of water vapor when the same volume of air is saturated at given temperature, at given the temperature T. The temperature is the same, volume of the air is same. Initially, first numerator is mass of water vapor present in the air. The denominator is mass of water vapor at the saturated condition. That is what the denominator. Now, uh, how to calculate these values? Once again, uh, this is the for water vapor at a normal condition, PW in uh, PWB equal to MWRW into T, which is also equal to NWR bar into T. For water vapor at saturated condition, so this equation PW is replaced by PS. So PS into V equal to MS into RW into T, which is NS R bar into T. Now, mass of water vapor present in the air ordinary condition divided by mass of water vapor present in the air for the saturated condition. So, from the previous equation, substituting for MW and MS, the equation is simplified as PW by PS. So, PW is the partial pressure of water vapor and PS is the partial pressure of water vapor at saturated condition. So, the denominator, the value denominator, you may take it from the steam table. So, phi relative humidity is MW by MS, mass of water vapor divided by mass of water vapor for saturated condition, which is also equal to PW by PS. That is partial pressure of water vapor divided by partial pressure of water vapor at the saturated condition. And another property is degree of saturation mu, that is actual specific humidity divided by saturated specific humidity. So, mu equal to W by WES. Uh, already we have defined what is W and what you WES. Substituting this will be PW by PS multiplied by P minus PS divided by P minus PW. So, it is just substituting for W and WS will get this equation degree of saturation. And uh, <clears throat> in the air conditioned room, we require, we, we, we have to calculate dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature. So, this is the ordinary thermometer. So, we have a mercury bulb and we have a stem mercury uh, hairline, actually mercury wire is there. And when the air, when the mercury is expanding, it will rise in the uh, column, mercury column, and you can read the temperature. So this is ordinary thermometer. So measuring temperature using ordinary thermometer or dry bulb temperature, the dry bulb thermometer, it is called as dry bulb temperature. And look at this thermometer. So you have a wick, you have a cotton wick covering the uh, mercury portion of the uh, thermometer. Now this is saturated. Now, the air is flowing over the wick, the wick, the, actually the water vapor present in the wick is getting evaporated. Now, the temperature shown by the thermometer is, is based on the evaporation of the water vapor. So, when the thermometer mercury portion is covered with the wick, right, so, I mean, a wick which is a cotton wick, uh, which is choked with the water, then it is called as wet bulb temperature. So, the temperature measured with the ordinary thermometer is the dry bulb temperature. The temperature measured with the thermometer when the bulb is enveloped with a cotton wick saturated with water is called as wet bulb temperature. 
and uh, the temperature at which the water starts to condense is called as dew point temperature. So that is already we defined what is dew point temperature. When you further, when you continuously reduce the temperature at one particular point and what particular temperature the water starts to condense, the temperature is called as dew point temperature. So these three temperatures are important for the uh, air conditioning calculations, DPT, WPT and uh, DPT. And uh, uh, the, actually there are, uh, there are two differences. The difference between dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature is called as wet bulb depression. So the DBT minus WBT is called as wet bulb depression and similarly the difference between dry bulb temperature and the dew point temperature is called as dew point depression. So DBT minus DPT it is a dew point depression. And this is the instrument called as cyclo cyclometer. Uh, if you look at the cyclometer, it has ordinary thermometer and a thermometer with the wick. So this is what uh, drive, it measures the dry bulb temperature and this thermometer measures the wet bulb temperature. So the instrument used to measure a dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature is called as cyclometer. So how to use the instrument? So you hold the handle, hold the thermometer using the handle and rotate the handle so that the air current will be flowing over the mercury bulb, mercury portion so that the air will, the, temp, the thermometer will indicate the air temperature both in, in terms of dry bulb temperature and the wet bulb temperature. So this is another exam, another diagram of the uh, thermometer. So this is the dry bulb thermometer and this is the wet bulb thermometer and this, this is the big portion. And this process, adiabatic saturation process is important for the psychrometric calculations. You take, uh, we consider the uh, chamber. This is a insulated chamber where we have small quantity of water. The unsaturated air at condition 1 enters on the left side and uh, saturated air at condition 2 leaves on the right side. And look at the properties, G1 is the mass of the dry air, M1 is the mass of the water vapor, W1 is the specific humidity of the air, T1 is the temperature and H1 is the enthalpy of the air. Similarly on the other side, saturated air, G2 is the amount of dry air, W2 is the amount of water vapor. Now here it is adiabatic saturation process. So the W2 equal to W2S, that is uh, specific humidity at saturated condition. So M2 is the uh, mass of the water vapor and T2 is the temperature, which is wet bulb temperature. So at the entry, it is dry bulb temperature and the outlet, the temperature is saturated. So this is called as wet bulb temperature and H2 is the enthalpy, which is again saturated enthalpy. And uh, when the air enters here, it has got temperature, it has got the mass of the water vapor. Now the heat is transferred. So from the air to the water, the heat is transferred, the water is heated up and uh, these two, the air and the water, water will come to a thermal equilibrium. So because of the, due to the thermal equilibrium, the water vapor, the layer, water layer, it is getting evaporated, the water vapor is getting mixed with the air and it leaves as a saturated air. And uh, continuously when the air is picking up the water vapor, so water level will decrease. So we add some water vapor. So the makeup water, we add some water vapor through the small opening. And when unsaturated air flows over a long sheet of water in an insulated chamber, the water evaporates and the specific humidity of the air increases. So here the water evaporates and the water evaporate water vapor is getting mixed with the air. So the specific humidity of the air is increasing. Then both the air and the water are cooled by evaporation takes place. So it is cooled, the water and the air are cooled. The process continues until the energy transferred from the air to the water equal to the energy required to vaporize the water. So this is the thermal equilibrium. The amount of heat transferred to the air from the air to the water equal to the energy required to vaporize the water. The thermal equilibrium exists at this point and the air is saturated. So continuously getting evaporated and one particular point it will become saturated. Yeah, that is what adiabatic saturation process. Why this is adiabatic process? It is, it is occurring in an insulated chamber 
uh, there is no external heat transfer to the uh, system. And the adiabatic saturation process is shown here in the diagram. Uh, this is the initial condition and this is dew point temperature and this is what the adiabatic saturated condition and this temperature is 2 which is dry bulb temperature, wet bulb temperature and this is the dry bulb temperature. So, the applying the energy equation from the first law of thermodynamics, energy entering into the system is equal to energy leaving the system. The air is entering with the enthalpy HA1, HA1, so G into HA1. Water vapor enters with the enthalpy HW1, so M1 into HW1 is equal to plus. We are adding some water water or makeup water, so M2 minus M1 into HF2 at enthalpy HF2 is equal to G. The air is leaving, the same quantity of air is leaving, so G into HA2 plus M2 is the mass of the water vapor leaving with the enthalpy HW2. So, HW1 is the specific enthalpy of the water vapor at T1, which is dry bulb temperature. HW2 is the specific enthalpy of water vapor at T2, which is wet bulb temperature. HA1 is specific enthalpy of the air at temperature T1. HA2 is the specific enthalpy of the air at temperature T2. And HF2 is the specific enthalpy, specific enthalpy of water at temperature T2. Now, dividing by the G throughout the equation, so HA1 plus W into HW1 plus W2 minus W1 HF2 equal to HA2 plus W2 by HW2. So, under here solving for W1, so W1 the specific humidity of the air at the entry of the adiabatic saturated, so HA1 minus HA2 plus W2 into HG2 minus HF2 divided by HW1 minus HF2 and finally it is W1 equal to CPA specific heat of the air T2 minus T1. Uh, wet bulb temperature minus dry bulb temperature plus W2 into H of G2 divided by W1 minus H of 2. And W2 equal to where W2 equal to 0 0.622 PS by P minus PS. And the enthalpy of the mixture we can calculate H equal to HA plus W into H2. So, this is enthalpy of the air and this is enthalpy of the water vapor present in the mixture. And the next we introduce the psychrometric chart. So, we discussed the different psychrometric properties, uh, relative humidity, specific humidity, uh, specific volume of the air, dry bulb temperature, wet bulb temperature, enthalpy of the air and uh, dew point temperature. Now, all the properties are graphically represented by a chart. The chart is called a psychrometric chart. So, the chart, if you look at the chart, uh, this is another example. The y axis specific humidity of the air, x axis dry bulb temperature of the air, and this line is the wet bulb temperature. And there are some inclined line where we can read the enthalpy here, the scale, and there are some curved line that indicates the specific humidity of the air. And we have the specific volume line. So, we have the specific volume line, enthalpy line, relative humidity line, and here you can read the wet bulb temperature. On the horizontal axis, we measure the dry bulb temperature and vertical axis, we measure the, uh, the uh, specific humidity of the air. And this is the real psychrometric chart uh, that you can uh, use for all your calculations. So, thank you. Uh, we will meet again through another lecture.